Okay, guys, I just want to do a quick introduction to chapter 8, basically regarding friction and the theory of dry friction. Um, just to, to give a bit of a background before we move into the more, uh, the, the sections where we begin to apply things and, and do problems. So, if we, if we, be, we can begin by looking at this figure 8.1. If we've got this block that's just resting on the surface, let's take that P away. Let's take that applied force away. And let's just have a quick look here. What is our free body diagram? We just have weight down and we have a normal force um, opposing it. Okay? Um, but actually, that normal force, and, and the reason why I want to do this is um, you'll see a bit later. Actually, that normal force is a distributed force, right? Obviously, because there's a surface contact, and because there's a surface contact, we have a distributed normal force. In the same way, actually, with the weight. We've got a distributed weight because we've got a, a, a length over here. And that normal force also is a reaction force to that weight, as a, but it's distributed, okay? Now, what happens is, when we begin to apply a force, a horizontal force, P, that force wants to now move this box or this crate or whatever you want to call it, wants to move it relative to the surface. It wants to move it that way while the surface remains stationary, right? So there's going to be some relative motion or, or a tendency for there to be relative motion. This, we want to move this box relative to this surface, okay? So while there's no force P, this is our free body diagram. We're going to have a normal force and a, and a weight. When we begin to apply a force P, what actually happens is um, at, this, at the interaction between the, the, the two um, surfaces, actually what's happening is you've got these little irregularities. Let's call it bumps on the top surface and bumps on the bottom surface. And as you pull, as you begin to pull that, that, uh, that body, to the one side, these bumps begin to interact with each other and they form these reaction forces at each of these, um, at these bumps where they interact. Okay? And these reaction forces, you can see they're at an angle and they're also a distributed load across the surface. Th this reaction force has a normal component and a horizontal component. Okay? So you've got a bunch of these reaction forces. You've got a normal component. You've got a horizontal component. That normal component is the normal force, of course. And the horizontal component is then the frictional force. So as we begin to apply this force here, we get, and I, I want you to take note of it, the normal force that was a constant um, distribution like this, Right, and then we just obtain the the resultant normal force by calculating the area under the curve and finding the geometric center. That normal force begins to shift to the right. the The resultant of it, can you see? It begins to shift. This is your normal distribution. Okay. So as we begin to apply the force P, we develop a friction force, which is the horizontal force, and and this normal force, the, the distribution begins to be lopsided, if you will. It begins to be more concentrated to that side. So that ultimately, let's just draw it in weight. Ultimately, what you get is something like this. If we apply P to the side, weight will stay where it is. But the normal force that was in the middle there shifts to the side like that. And we have our friction force. So our friction force is only developed when we begin to apply a force that wants to move this, this object relative to um, the surface, okay? So I just want you to see this. When we apply P, two things happen. One, we develop friction force. And number two, <clears throat> the normal force. The normal force shifts, okay? So <clears throat> I just want you to take note of that. We will explain this more in, in detail. 
<clears throat> in the other videos. But essentially what's happening is that as you're applying that force P, you are essentially trying to tip this box and that surface there loses, loses pressure and that surface there increases pressure. So your normal force begins to move to that side. Okay, but this is the basic idea. I just wanted to give you a bit of a background. What are you meant to learn from this? That number one, frictional force only develops when we, are, when we have that applied force. If there's no applied force that wants to move the box relative to the surface, then we don't have a friction force. And as we apply that friction force, that distributed normal load shifts to the one side. Okay, so that's essentially what I want to explain from this first video. <clears throat> um, the next video we'll touch on is equilibrium. Cheers.